and the Skullkenny, who are the Leinster champions for 2022. A full-time score of 22 points to Kilkenny, 17 points to Galway. Michael, what did you make of the game? Yeah, it was a slow burner of a game. It was a, a, a defensive kind of a game. Both teams set out their stall to really defend well, and they did. Galway missed a number of goal chances, particularly in the first half. And Kenny missed a couple in the second half. But I think it ultimately came down to a magnificent defence and a free-taking exhibition by TJ Reid, who I thought was magnificent. Incredible. 12 points here today. He was brilliant throughout the game, but as you said, that free-taking was really the difference. Yeah, I thought that was the difference in the game. And not only was it freeze, it was, he was getting from his own half. And I, look, if you look at someone to win the game, he was the one who done it from the freeze because both teams were finding it nearly impossible to score from play. Conor Whelan got a, a, a four points, I think, and did very well for Galway. But TJ Reid's free taking in the second half was just an exhibition. A lot of people were talking about TJ Reid not being on form. I think he's answered those questions here today. Yeah, there's no question. Like A player like that just never goes away and uh, he's just a magnificent player. He, he was also very good from general play. He caught two or three great puck outs in the second half and really showed everybody that he's far from finished. And back to that first half, Galway did have four goal scoring opportunities. Yeah, and like a mixture of poor finishing, but again, credit Owen Murphy, you know. I suppose Owen and TJ would have been two of the most experienced Kilkenny players, and they really stood up tonight. Owen Murphy made some very good saves. One in particular, when he came out and blocked, I think it was Brian Concannon, but Galway will rule their finishing as well. You have to be more clinical at this level. And it just seemed, I don't know if it was just me, but it seemed that nothing went Galway's way. They, they didn't get a rub of the green whatsoever. It, everything seemed to go against them. Yeah, we were just saying that. And yeah, we were just saying that on commentary there uh, that you know everything seemed to go against Galway today. And look, you get days like that, but Galway have been here before as well. And maybe you know they, they probably should have made better use of their chances. In fairness to them, their defence was also magnificent because Kilkenny scored very little from play in the second half. I think one or two points. But as I said, TJ's freeze. But yeah, at this level, and they'll know that you have to take the chances when they come your way. When you're on top, you must make it pay. And they they didn't do that, unfortunately. And uh, you know a, a few decisions. They'll, they'll say it went against them, but they were lucky that, that you know, to survive uh, in the first half. I think you know, there was a stamp on Richie Reid there. But anyway, look, that's the way the, the game goes. And is it fair to say that it wasn't the best performance by, by either side here today? Yeah, I think you have to be honest. Obviously, from a Kilkenny point of view, they'll be delighted and rightly so. But I think, in fairness, the match was poor. Uh, it never really lifted to any great heights as regards uh, fr free-flowing hurling. But I think both teams went out to, to make it a dogfight. And, uh, d you know, they did make it a dogfight. It was fascinating. and It was a tactical battle and it was a defensive battle. And it was who was going to just get those scores extra. That's why Reid was so important. And do you think maybe the Crow Park factor, does that have anything to play with it? It was quite dead here at times. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with more of that. Look at the timing of this. For me, for the Leinster final, it should be on a Sunday, first of all. And this, this place, it, it needs to be at least 50,000, 60,000 here to have any atmosphere. And it certainly was very dead. It, it was an exciting enough finish because, you know, you're going for it. But for much of the game, uh, it's too small in attendance. And I even think a uh, venue like Port Leash or Tullamore would have had a huge atmosphere tonight. And just to mentor Connor Cooney as well for Galway, I thought he was brilliant. A few frees there at the end that just didn't go his way. They were handy enough frees compared to some of the earlier ones that he struck. But I suppose that's just maybe the, the pressure and coming down to it in, in the last few minutes. Yeah, but that's him. that's why uh, you know Reed's performance is so important. Like Connor Cooney did miss frees that again, like not being harsh on the chap. He's been brilliant all year for Galway. You have to get those frees. They're vital, and he missed a couple. He missed a couple from playing and a couple from from place balls. But look at we're, it's easy sitting up here in fairness to the chap he, he got some great ones as well I thought as well that Conor Whelan was very good up front his touch was magnificent at times some of the scores that he got as well was outstanding yeah I thought he was actually the one Galway forward that played really well uh, you know in fairness both sets of forwards will want to do better going forward but uh, he was the one fella in Galway that really stood up and was counted uh, some of the others will, had very disappointing nights and this is the second time that the teams have met. You know, we've seen that last game, the controversial free at the end, and Galway won by a point in the end. And now Kilkenny have got over them. We were waiting to see what would happen on the sideline here. Will Henry Shefflin and Brian Cody shake hands? They didn't seem to shake hands. Uh, Shefflin didn't move from the sideline here. He didn't walk out onto the pitch. He stayed just inside the line as Brian Cody went straight out onto the pitch. And he didn't make a dart at all for Henry. 
So I wonder what's happening there. Yeah, he did at the end. Henry went up to bring Cody, but uh, it just uh, no, it was after the presentation, and uh, he came back shaking his head. What happened? I don't know. Um, it's just. Sorry, did they shake hands? I must have missed. It was that. after the presentation. Uh, just maybe before the presentation, Henry was standing and he walked down to Brian Cody. They did shake hands, but Henry again walked away shaking his head. It's so sad from a Kilkenny point of view to see that these these two men have been brilliant for Kilkenny. They've soldiered down through the years. They're, they've been magnificent for the county, and it's it's. Uh, look, I don't know if Ant was said it probably wasn't. I don't know, and uh, you know, really, we should be talking about the game more so. But it is a bit sad to see it. Oh, it's it's really sad to see. Yeah, hopefully that can be sorted out. But it's it's baffling to watch people that have gone through the battles that they have gone through, the heights that they have have reached. You know, it's really been incredible. So it, it's baffling to see. Yeah, it was as you said. For ages, nothing happened, and uh, then they did eventually shake hands anyway. So look at hopefully, look hopefully in the heat of battle. Hopefully, as I said, I don't know if there's anything. Maybe there's not. Maybe we read too much into it. But they've, they've been two great men, two great servants for Kilkenny, and you'd hope that you know that this something like this wouldn't spoil that. And where can Kilkenny go from here? Well, they're 70 minutes away from Northern final. They're back in the Northern semi-final where they've been for the last two years. They haven't got over that line and they'll be very determined. And they're very dangerous now uh, because they'll get great confidence in winning this tonight. You can see they really celebrated it wildly tonight. And, you know, they, that's and rightly so. It's a Leinster title and it's their third in a row. So they're going into an Northern semi-final where, again, they may be going in as underdogs and they're very, very dangerous. They haven't fully been on form tonight. or They haven't really been fully formed at all this year, I don't think yet. They haven't reached the heights that Kilkenny can reach. Yeah, and I don't, I, I, you're right, but they're winning. They're in a, they're not in a semi-final. When, look, they've lost two matches, we know that. But they will get confidence from this very dangerous animal in the semi-final. It'll be back here again. They love it up here. And, you know, as I said, they'll get confidence. They'll expect more from their forwards the next day. Who they'll play, we have to wait and see. But you certainly couldn't rule them out. And for Henry and Galway, it's a tough one to take today. Yeah, it's a disappointing night on the way they play it. Uh, they're finishing, he'll be very disappointed with their finishing. He'll be very delighted with their back six. They were, I thought they were outstanding. But he'll be fierce disappointed in the goal chances and some points and free chances I didn't take. You have to take them at this level. That will annoy him more, more so. And, you know, he, he, he will be disappointed, but they're still not out of it. They'll probably more than likely now have to face Cork uh, going forward, and that'll be a massive battle. And if I had to ask you who's going to go the whole way this year, would you be able to give me a prediction? Well, look at uh, Limerick are in the box seat still, in my view. Uh, they're playing Clare tomorrow. That'll be a massively interesting game now, you know, because uh, whoever wins it obviously is in another Ireland semi final as well. I still think that they're the team to beat, but, uh, you know, it's wide open. Brilliant, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley.